Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take you through an example of the backtracking algorithm for constraint satisfaction problems. Uh, in previous videos, which you can see the link uh, to below, previous video I showed you, you know, how to determine if there was a solution uh, to a constraint satisfaction problem. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually um, find it. We're going to go over the algorithm from our text that. Uh, does it, finds your solution for you, and um, I'm going to give you a couple examples. So um, I'll give you uh, examples of how it works in general, and then we'll distill it down into a little bit more detail. The, um, the algorithm has uh, pieces that can modify its overall behavior. Um, so in subsequent videos, we'll go into details of some of those uh, pieces. Uh, but for right now, to try to keep this uh, manageable and short, um, we'll, we'll leave those pieces out, okay? And I'll explain them when we, when we get there. Okay, so let me bring up my whiteboard here. And uh, you can see that um, the algorithm is in the upper left-hand corner. And let me zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better feel for it, so you can see it. And what we'll do is, is we'll go through the map coloring problem for Australia. Okay, now on the left hand side, you've got the algorithm itself, backtracking search, and the way you read this, um, the pseudocode is that you have a constraint sat satisfaction problem, right? With all of the pieces that go with it that would be in scope, right? That you want to have this algorithm, this function have access to it okay and if you look at the manufacturers or the manufacturers the publishers um source code repository you'll see that this is kind of set up you know like a like a function or a method that belongs to a class but you know you have all of your you know variables all of your domains everything is going to be um within scope accessible by your algorithm okay it kind of makes sense that that's that that's the case right um, so this thing is going to return either a solution or a failure right and it's a recursive algorithm as so many of these are right so um, backtracking search is going to call backtrack and what it's passing to it is some list right or some set and the definition of the constraint satisfaction problem itself to backtrack here okay so this is going to be that first argument would be an assignment, right? It could be a list, um, could be whatever form that the solution would take in your code, okay? Um, and I think in uh, the examples in the publisher's textbook, or uh, publisher's um, repository, you know, they're using, they have examples in Python, they have examples in Lisp, C Sharp, Java. So, you know, whatever could store a collection of data what you would use okay anyway so this is going to return a solution or failure okay so if the assignment is complete then you return the assignment so okay so the assignment is going to be the solution so what is assignment so that is um, the collection of all the variables with their values okay um, the assignment of all the different um, pieces of data the configuration right so domains um, variables with the different values assigned from their, their possible domains, um, that sort of thing. Okay. So what this does is it starts off by picking an unassigned variable. Okay. So, you know, on the right hand side here, we've got the map and just as a reminder, you know, what are our, what are our, uh, variables, you know, we have a constraint graph over here where WA is a variable for Western Australia, NT is a variable representing Northern Australia, right? And so the lines in between the nodes on the graph, the arcs, those represent constraints. Where are the constraints again? The constraints are that um, no variable uh, can share the same color with its adjacent variable, right? Um, so, you know, what are the uh, domains of all the variables initially? Let's go up here. So the, the variables are 
you know, W A N T Q uh, N S W V S A N T, right? So what are their domains? Well, the domains for each of them is red, green, and blue, right? Because those are the three colors that can be assigned to any territory on the map. Um, and what are the constraints? You know, the constraints are that each variable has to have, each adjacent variable connected by an arc has to um, have a different value. So WA can't have the same value as NT, can't have the same value as SA, you know, NT can't have the same value as Q, uh, etc. Okay, so that's kind of the constraints. And so you've got, you know, this constraint that WA and NT, they can't have the same they can't have the same value, okay? So this first part right here where it says select unassigned variable. Okay, and the text talks about how you have um, different choices on how you select the unassigned variable, okay? And it can have performance impacts. And again, we'll go into some of the details on that um, in later videos, okay? Now it says in here for each value in order domain values, this is another one of those things, right? Where depending on um, which order you select values from the domain for a variable, okay? That could um, impact overall performance, okay? And again, we'll go into that in uh, subsequent um, videos, okay? Uh, all right, so if the value is consistent with the assignment, then what do you do? Add that assignment, right, the value being assigned to a particular variable to the uh, overall assignment, okay? And then we're gonna do some inferences, okay? So we'll go ahead and include how this function works in this uh, video. Um, so this is gonna be where we talk about forward checking, okay? And it actually speeds up the search for a solution quite a bit by pruning um, subtrees from your search tree. Okay, now if the inferences isn't a failure, then you can go ahead and add the inferences to the assignment. That just means, hey, they're going to stick. Okay, um, and then here comes the recursive part. Okay, you recursively run the backtrack algorithm again, and then, um, you know, continue on, right? Repeat yourself. And then once you finally get past that, the result is not failure, then you go ahead and return the result. The result is going to be the solution to the constraint satisfaction uh, problem. Okay, uh, let's see here. All right, so let's see what happens or how this um, algorithm would work if there wasn't any inferences, right? So this will just give you a, a basic introduction to how it works in general. And then um, we'll do the example with forward checking. So that way you can see how things get pruned, right? So if you don't have forward checking, okay, you have to start somewhere, okay? And so what will happen is, is that you go through and you say, all right, well, let's go ahead and start off by um, picking an unassigned variable, okay? So I'm just going to go and follow this order here. I'm just going to go left or right, right? But you can, depending on how you define this select unassigned variable function, you might pick Q instead, or you might start with T, right? There's heuristics for determining which one um, you pick first. Now I'm just going to go with, you know, left or right, okay? So you start off by assigning some value, right? So we're gonna pick a variable, okay? We're starting off with WA, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, is for each value, now this is where you have another one of those functions, order domain values. So you could pick any one of the values to assign to that variable, in this case, R, G, or B, right? And there's heuristics for determining which one you would pick first, right? So depending on which one you pick first, can impact the overall performance of the algorithm, right? But I'm just gonna keep this one simple and we'll tackle those questions in later videos. Now I'm just gonna go from left to right, okay? So 
we'll start off by assigning wa equals r okay so we're skipping the inferences part okay so we're just going to continue continue on right so what would happen next is is that you know we would end up with a tree that's going to have all these values assigned okay so i'm going to show you what the partial search tree would look like without going into too much detail up front because we're going to go into that detail when we put the inferences in okay but anyway so we would assign to war right and then we would go and look at the next variable right so nt okay now what we would have to do is we would have to try to assign to it a value right now at the, if we just go with you know left to right red green blue well then as soon as you say nt equals r well that would be inconsistent right so if it's inconsistent, then this would be a failure, okay? And so the, the search would stop going along that subtree, okay? And so then we would backtrack, and then the search would continue with another value, nt equals g, right? So since there's no consistency there, okay, fine. Then um, the recursive part would kick in, Okay, and then you do kind of do the same kind of thing, right? So what are the adjacent variables from NT? Okay, well, we already have WA, okay, that's where we came from. So then you'd have one for SA. SA equals red. Now remember, we're just picking the first value in the domain. Okay, so is that inconsistent? No, it's not. So, okay, we can continue down that part of the tree okay so from SA equals R who's next to SA well W A right now here it says select unassigned variable now WA already has a value that's assigned to it, right? So we actually wouldn't be looking at WA again. What about NT? Well, NT is already assigned also, so we wouldn't be looking at that. So we'd be going and we'd be looking at Q since it's next. All right, oops. So Q equals, and then we try to assign it red, but that's inconsistent, so that part of the search would end there, right? And we'd have to backtrack back to where we came from. That is an invalid assignment. So the search would terminate down that part of the tree. So then we would say, all right, well, what about Q equals um, green? We tried red, didn't work. How about green? Okay, fine. All right? And so on, all right? It's going to continue going that way until you have a um, solution, okay, to where there's valid assignments for everything, or there is no valid assignment, in which case there would be no solution, okay? So now let's go through, let's go back and take a look at this um, by including the inference, okay? So the search tree can get quite large, okay? It can get quite large just following that. So putting the inferences in by using what's called forward checking can speed this process up a ton, okay? So now we'll go through the algorithm a little bit more closely, okay? So start off, okay, by, you know, same kind of thing what we did before. We're gonna select an unassigned variable and we're just going left or right, right? So we're going to say WA equals um, red because we're going to select from the domain just from left to right. Okay. So 
That's that first line, variable equals select unassigned variable. Now for each value, for each value, in order domain values, right? So we have to pick a value from the domain. So we're just going left to right, you know, red. If the value is consistent with the assignment, then, and it is because there's nobody else in conflict, right? There's no other variables that have been assigned any values. So no problem, okay? Now, um, that's gonna stick then, WA equals R. Now we do the inferences part, okay? Now this is where forward checking comes in. And all forward checking says is, check any variables that share a constraint with WA, right? And then if there's any inconsistencies, okay? So if any um, variables for the, you know, any values for the neighboring variables for WA contain values in their domain that would conflict with WAs, then just delete them from the domain, okay? So it sounds a little bit tougher than it actually is. So let's take a look at WA, right? Who does it share constraints with? NT and SA, right? So what this says is, is go ahead and for the domain of NT, delete red from its, uh, do from its domain, okay? So that would leave only green and blue in the domain of NT and similar for the domain of SA. Okay. So, since there's no empty domains for any of the other variables or any of the variables at that point, then the inferences didn't fail, which means that these inferences are going to stick. These changes, they, they, they go ahead, let's move forward, let's keep them. Okay. Now, here's where we go ahead and do the recursion part. So we're gonna go backtrack and we're gonna do it again, okay? So, go back up to the top. The assignment is not complete, we're not done yet. So select an unassigned variable. Okay, WA has been assigned. So now we can grab another one. So we're gonna go left to right, so we'll grab NT. Okay. So what do we do? Select an unassigned variable. We're gonna go left to right. So what's in the domain for NT, green, that's the first one. So we're gonna assign green there, okay? Is that value consistent with the assignments? Yeah, right, green and uh, red are different. So NT and WA, no problem. Now, what about NT and SA, right? Well, there's nothing consistent there because we could choose blue for NT, right? All right, so we're going ahead and this assignment's gonna stick. Now let's do our inferences again. So let's take a look at the neighbors of NT. Well, WA is already assigned, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, now what about SA? Okay, well, SA has green, right? So that would be a conflicting value. So we'll get rid of that from SA's domain, and then similarly for uh, Q, okay? So Q is gonna have red and blue left in its domain. Oops, the domain of Q. Okay, so those differences, those changes to the domain, okay? Doesn't leave any domains empty. So those inferences are valid, so they're gonna stick, okay? Now we go back up and uh, we have our recursive part here, okay? So we're gonna do it again. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna select an unassigned variable and we're just going left to right. So who's unassigned next? Q. Okay, so then we have to pick a value for Q. Okay, so we're just going left to right, so red. Okay, so left to right, red's the first one. So is that value consistent 
with the assignments we have so far? Does red conflict with what's been assigned to NT? No. Nothing's been assigned to SA yet, right? And also we could pick something in the domain of SA that would be different. So there's no conflict there. So we'll go ahead and we'll assign red to Q. Now it's time to do our inferences part. Okay, so look at the neighbors of Q. Well, NT's already had something assigned to it, so we don't have to worry about that. Now what about SA? Okay, now SA doesn't have red in it already, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, now what about NSW? Domain of NSW. Well, that's still got red in it, so we're going to get rid of that. Okay, so this is kind of making the, the graph arc consistent as we progress, okay? All right, so. Uh, all right, so that guy is done, right? Inferences do not equal failure because all of the domains of all of the different variables are not empty. Okay, so then we're going to do the recursive part again. Okay, so go back up. Select an unassigned variable. Well, who's next, right? We did WA's assigned, NT's assigned, Q's assigned, so NSW's next. We have to assign to it a value, right? So the first value in NSW is green, so we'll assign it green. Now, is that consistent with the assignments, right? So NSW, is there a value we could select from the domain of SA that would keep it consistent? Yes, blue. What about Q? Well, Q's got an assigned R, so if we assign G to NSW, that's consistent. What about the domain of V? Right? Well, we could choose either red or blue from the domain of V, and it wouldn't be a problem, right? We wouldn't be inconsistent, so that's fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave this one's going to stick, right? Green assigned to NSW. So now we'll do our forward checking. We'll do our inferences. Okay, so let's look at NSW. Now Q's already been assigned, so we don't have to worry about that. SA hasn't been assigned yet, so we got to look at SA, right? So the domain of SA does not have green in it. It only has blue, so we're not going to delete anything from SA. Now let's look at the domain for V. Right now, V um, does have green in it, so we're going to remove that from the domain of V. Okay, so the inferences all stick, right? Everything's fine, there's no empty domains, so we can continue on and we're going to do our recursive call. Okay, so <clears throat> let's pick the next variable, which is V. Right, so we have to assign to it a value. What's the first value in this domain? R. So is R consistent? An assignment of R to V, is that consistent? Well, NSW, we don't have to worry about that because it's already been assigned a value, right? Well, I, I mean, I take that back, right? We have to, that's not true, right? We have to make sure that it doesn't conflict, okay, if we choose R, okay? Since there is no R in S NSW, then there's no, not going to be any click or com conflict there. What about SA? Right, we got to check against SA. Is there any con conflict there? There is no red in the domain of SA, so this is a valid assignment. This is a consistent assignment. Okay, fine. So that's gonna, that assignment's going to stick. So now we're going to do our inferences. Okay, we're going to do our forward checking. So let's look at the domain of SA and let's look at the domain of NSW. Okay. So NSW has already been assigned, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay. What about SA? Okay. Well, SA hasn't been assigned. Okay. But there's no red inside of its domain. So we have nothing to do. So we're good. Okay. So there's no failure in our inferences. Okay. So now let's go on. Let's hit that recursive part. Okay, so now we move on to SA. And we have to pick some value for SA, right? So we go to the very first value in this domain, which is blue. We check to make sure that that's consistent with everything that's been assigned so far. Okay, so what does WA have? 
It's a sign red. What does NT have? It's a sign green. What does Q have? It's a sign red. What does NSW have? It's a sign uh, blue, right? So, do we have a consistent inconsistency there? NSW has green. Q has red. NT has green. WA has red. So no inconsistency. So that assignment's going to stick. Now we can do our inferences. Okay. So do our forward checking. So is blue in the domain of WA? Well, WA's already been assigned, so we don't care. NT's already been assigned. We don't care. Q's already been assigned. We don't care. NSW's already been assigned. We don't care. V has already been assigned. We don't care. Okay. So we're done with SA. So we've got the recursive part here. Okay, so we're now going to go and check um, V. Okay, so we're going to assign the first value from V from its domain, which is red. All right, so then we check to make sure that that's a valid assignment. Okay, or I'm sorry, not V, T, 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 T. Where did it be? Sorry, T. T, 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 okay. Um, is it violating any constraints? No, there's no constraints on T, right? It's not, it's not adjacent to anybody. So no problem. We could do inferences, but everybody else has been assigned, so there's nothing to do there. Um, so yeah, I mean, so we've gone through, right? Our results not failure, okay? There's no more backtracking to do. So since the result is not a failure, okay, we go ahead and return the result. Now, what's the result? Okay, the result is what we return from backtrack. Okay, now what were we returning from backtrack? Well, what we're returning from backtrack is um, the solution, right? So what's our solution? Look at the set of all variables, right? WA equals red, NT equals G, Q equals R, NSW equals G, V equals R, SA equals B, and T equals R, right? So you just grab all of your variables from your uh, assignment collection, okay? And then uh, return those values or return those variables with their values. So let's just double check, do a sanity check here. So WA's got red, NT's got green, SA has got blue, Q's got red, NSW has got green, V has got R, and then um, T's got R. So any constraints violated? No, everybody next to each other is, um, is uh, clean, right? or is a uh, different, the values are different, right? So green, blue, Queensland, red, New South Wales, green, uh, Victoria, red, and Tasmania, red. So there's a solution, okay? Um, if at any point, right, you can take a look at the algorithm here, okay? If uh, your value is inconsistent, Right? If any time you had a value that was inconsistent with the assignment, right, with the assignment of all the variables, then you'd skip all of this stuff. Okay, you'd skip all of this stuff, and then you would remove all of your assignments for you know the value being assigned to the variable in question, and all of the changes to the domains from your inference from the assignment, right? So you would undo, it would stick. And then you'd go back up and you'd grab the next value, right? From the domain and continue on until you found one that worked, okay? But if you couldn't find any that worked, right? If this was false for every single one of them, right? Then you would never recursively call yourself and therefore you'd get past this if and you'd return failure, okay? So, 
know, I'll, this video's gone on long enough, so I'll let you come up with a scenario on your own. Try to find on your own um, a combination of values, a map or whatnot that would uh, result in failure. And then you can trace through that and see it on your own. And that would be a great way to practice uh, this algorithm, okay? So hopefully you found that uh, useful. And in subsequent videos, you know, I'll go into more detail about the select unassigned variables and the order domain values heuristics, which can speed things up quite a bit. But notice too that with that forward checking, the tree became basically a straight line, right? I mean, it was more like a linked list than a tree uh, because you were able to prune out whole subtrees by removing values from other variables domains, right? So you never had to look at them um, you know, as you, as the search progressed and that sped things up uh, quite a bit. Okay. And hopefully, you know, my earlier example where I was kind of drawing out the full tree and giving you a, a feel for how the tree could develop without forward checking, um, was useful to compare against how the tree developed, uh, with forward checking. Okay. All right. So anyway, that's everything that I got for you today. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, we'll see you next time.